How's it going, people? Hope you're doing well. First, I'm going to complain a little bit. So, permission to complain. A lot of people ask me, how do I manage my time? I just don't seem to have enough time in the day. You know, it's, it's getting really annoying. And let me tell you why. Because there are a shit ton of books, workshops, seminars, blogs, and articles written on the topic of time management. And it's really old. If you're complaining about this, it either means you are supremely busy and have not gone and looked for the information yourself to educate yourself and just want to get some tips from somebody which you might not necessarily use or you genuinely have been trying time management strategies uh, that you that you've learned and you're not getting any real results so I find most of the people are in the former rather than the latter they are looking for these tools they are haven't gone out themselves and tried some of these methods out now if you have tried some of these methods out, um, you'll probably realize that managing your time is not necessarily what it's all about. Maybe you haven't come to that conclusion, but uh, take this from a guy who doesn't truly believe in time management. Yes, uh, you know, I believe in integrity. You should make your appointments. You should be on time. You should book and schedule things into your calendar so you know where to be, who with, and where. Yes, I agree with that. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm talking about is how do I fit everything into my schedule? All these things, all these to-dos, all these goals, all these objectives, all these tasks that are filling up my plate. Uh, you know, you need to work out. You, need to spend, you want to spend time with your family. Uh, you want to do some, a side business, a part-time job. Um, you're working full-time. You have a hobby. You want to practice yoga. I don't know. I don't know. You have. We all have so many interests that we want to put our time towards. But um, I think the problem with time management is that time is not the issue. Time is not the problem. The real issue that I find with my working with my clients is that though they are putting their time towards something, their attention is elsewhere. So let me put it this way. You're supposed to be spending quality time with your children. And instead of, while, while you're spending this quality time with your children, your brain goes off to, oh man, did I send that email? It's like, oh, I should be working out right now. I missed my workout today. Oh, I got to prepare for tomorrow's day. Oh no, I, I forgot that I was supposed to pick that up from the dry cleaners. If your attention is split up and not in the present moment, into the purpose of the minutes and hours that you're supposed to be dedicating to your child, then you're completely missing the point. So attention is much more valuable and it's more important than time, in my honest opinion. If you are present in the moment, if you're at integrity with other areas of your life, then you should be able to be present with what's happening right in front of you and not distracted with all different things maybe you're constantly checking what lady gaga is saying on twitter and maybe you're on facebook trying to update your post about how you're spending quality time with your child rather than actually doing it now i'm not trying to judge you or say that that's right or that's wrong or to condemn you i'm just trying to prove i'm trying to explain a point which is it's not the quality of time it's the quality of your attention your focus, your presence, your being with whoever and whatever you're supposed to be doing. Now, picture this. Rather than being distracted and having your attention split up in 12, 20, 30 different directions, whatever your task at hand is, you are focused on it and present with it, and everything else is not even in your mind. You are completely productive, or you are putting your energy, your intellect into the given task at hand. So I'd say the biggest, thing, the biggest thing that you need to start thinking about is what is important to you? What is your biggest priority? Tim Ferriss once said, 
you can drop a lot of balls. You can drop a lot of balls. And you can make a lot of mistakes. But if you get the important things done right, you will still outpace most people. You will still outpace most people. So what I think, what I get from Tim Ferriss saying that, who's, I mean, he has an entire book, uh, you know, literally on time management for our work week. And he's saying that essentially if you focus on the right things, everything else you don't even need to worry about. You can drop balls, you can let little fires happen, you can have little mistakes, little errors. But if you get the big important objectives right and you get them done, then everything else doesn't matter. So if your priority is your children, if your priority is hitting a specific milestone in your business, if your priority is quitting your job and starting your business, if your priority is investing in your first property, all the other stuff is not as important. How your business card looks, what it says under your name, what your title is, you know, uh, like how your website looks, how much content you've generated, all of your marketing. If, if your objective is to buy that first investment property, then all of that stuff doesn't necessarily matter. What you're looking for, your main objective might be, let's go find that neighborhood or that town or that house that we're going to be investing in and put in and let's focus on getting offers on the table, analyzing properties and putting offers on the table. All the other stuff you don't really need to worry about as much. You can let that stuff, you know, let that stuff do itself when, when you have the time. So if you, if you're listening to what I'm saying and you, and you, and you believe that priorities, pri managing priorities is more important than managing your time. And by prior managing your priorities, you can focus your attention on specific matters at hand and objectives that can actually help you get to where you want to be. This is what I would suggest. Number one, think about what are the main objectives. It could be for the week. It could be for the month. It could be for the year. And by by, by main, I, I, I'd suggest a singular goal, a singular objective. And if you have to, then put two, but as little as possible. What is that one thing that if you accomplished it, it would have a positive impact, a positive ripple effect on multiple areas of your life? So for some people, it might be by the end of the year, I want to be financially free. That's a very big challenge. Um, or by in the next 12 months, I want to purchase my first investment property. Or by the end of the year, I want to get to, down to 15% body fat. I don't know what you want to do. It's, it's literally going to be up to you. It could be playing the guitar. It could be... Um, I don't know, doing some sort of competitive sport, maybe doing like an Ironman or doing a Tough Mudder or something like that, whatever it is. It's what is the one objective that if you accomplished it, it would ripple out into multiple areas of your life. So for example, if you are somebody who wants to purchase their first investment property, like a lot of my clients are in real estate. So they would think about how does it have a positive impact on my on my on my life well it'll give me the confidence to purchase my next one i have something that i could i could say that i got my first deal under my belt i could add cash flow into my pocket i can add, have one property into my portfolio i am popping my cherry you know i'm no longer an investment property virgin it, it'll have so many positive aspects that everything else is secondary. All the other little tiny moving parts, you don't necessarily have to think about. So the first thing is look at what is the most important thing for you to accomplish this year. What is that singular objective that will have a positive impact on multiple areas of your life? So the next thing I would say is in line with that, this week, what are the three things you're going to do to make that happen. 
what are the three things that you're going to do that will actually get you closer to that singular objective, that huge objective, that goal, that milestone that will have positive, flourishing, amazing results and have it impact multiple areas of your life. And those are the three to-dos and that's what you need to put your attention on and those are your priority. And everything else is not necessarily a priority. And then I would look at what are the three things for me not to do that actually take away from me accomplishing my big objective. And this is the hard part. What are the three things not to do? So make a not to do list of three things. Maybe stop spending so much time on thinking and over analyzing or maybe stop spending time with certain groups or certain groups of people. Not that you're going to cut them off or shun them away. It's just you need to put your time and focus and energy into these three to-dos. And the not-to-dos could be, you know, drinking, bad habits, uh, social media, Facebook, things, you know, maybe limiting your time on certain things, watching TV too much. You can put things on your not-to-do list. And if you look at these three simple things, Number one, what is that singular goal that will have a positive impact on multiple areas of your life? Looking at what are the three to-dos this week or even today that could actually get me closer to that and then putting your time into it, doing it first thing in the day or whenever you have the time to, maybe after your job if, if that's your circumstances right now. And then what are the three things not to do? And I promise you, if you practice this, you will see really good results. You will see really great results. Because rather than thinking about the 10 goals, because it's great to have goals, it's very admirable, you have a high standard for yourself and it's incredible, and I think it's great. But if you're distracted by all the other goals and you're overwhelmed by how many you're not <laughs> even achieving, you're not feeling the win. You're not working towards a win. You're just making yourself feel bad and feel guilty for not doing the things that are on your list. So do these three things. Let me know how I can support you. And let me know how it goes. Have a good one, guys. See you later.